Hello, my treasures. It's time for a grueling mercenary team using probably the worst mercenary in the entire bunch. Gruel. Finally, there is a team where you can use this Merc. Now, I can't take credit for this myself. MXW was the one that actually came up with this build, but this is something that I've been searching for for quite a while, as it is one of the few mercenaries that I haven't covered on the channel as of yet. And honestly, this probably turned out a lot better than I ever expected, and can steal quite a few games. The basic game plan for this build is going to be using a bunch of orc synergy that allows us to combo out with Gruul with Dragon Maw Poacher. However, there are still some teams within Mercenaries that do use a bunch of dragons, so Dragon Slayer Shot is incredibly strong when you use it with Burning Shot, as this will allow you to do 60 damage to any Dragon Mercenary your opponent is going to have. For the Mercenary by Mercenary Breakdown, the first one is going to be Drek'thar using Shimmer Weed Potion to increase the HP pool of all of your Mercenaries, mainly going to be using a Blood Frenzy, however, once a orc does end up dying you can use shamanism instead which is what fell corruption turns into sarfang is the next mercenary on the team we're using serenite stompers and mostly using mobilizing strike however there are going to be a few edge cases where whirlwind comes up as a way to trigger maestra or even black hand berserker comes up as a way to get additional orc Onto the board. The third mercenary is going to be Olillian, who we are going to be using Tears of the Fallen, as these do also count as orcs, and basically only going to be using Relictic Leadership as her main ability. And for the fourth mercenary on the team, we are going to have Maestra. We are going to be using Mask of Mimicry as her equipment, mainly swapping between Dirty Tricks and Shifting Strike. The fifth mercenary on the team is going to be Rokara, who we are using Ancestral Armor to make her a little bit more tanky, mainly going to be using Offensive Strike and Orc Onslaught as her two abilities, and finally we have Gruul as mentioned before, with Burning Shot as his equipment, and mainly using him for Dragon Slayer Shot or Dragon Maw Poacher depending on what we're actually facing. Now, with that all being said, oh, let's look at some games. Alright, even split, let's see what they have in store for us tonight. Just gonna put down our normal three. Uh, you may or may not notice a different order than normal. I this is something that I've actually considered doing in a lot of the games that I played with this build. Always putting down a Lillian in the middle, or even Drekthar in the middle, because we are facing a Trigor. Any team that Trigor is in the center, it would probably be best just to have one of the first attackers in the center. But I really didn't deviate much from the build that was just given to me when I probably should have. Because I think the majority of the time having Maestra on the sides or in the middle would probably be better than on the sides. It really just depends on what the matchup is. I do like Drek'thar because a lot or I like putting Drek'thar on the furthest left hand side because a lot of people do end up putting their big carries on the left hand side but again trigor is the one exception to that rule and if we actually play around our opponent maybe having access to trigor then that would probably be the best solution I'm going to put down these two. We are probably going to one-shot Nefarian here. We're actually probably also going to leave Long Shin up, if I had to guess. Offensive Rally would be fun on the right target, but I think we're going to use Sudden Betrayal to maybe try to snipe the additional Mercenary, though maybe it would be better if we use Sudden or uh, Dirty Tricks instead. Eh, you never know. We'll just go with what we went with. That gets rid of that, so we don't have to deal with that. And then that gets rid of that. Then we hit there. Sudden Betrayal does absolutely nothing because we used it on an empty board. But at least we're not taking extra damage here. Let's do this. I, I have a feeling <laughs> we're going to end up wrecking ourselves with Long Shin. But I guess it doesn't actually matter. Oh, I'm all, we, we did it. <laughs> Okay, let's see what they have in store. Oh, hey, nature, good 
nature. I like seeing some variety still in uh, mercenaries, even after all this time. I am kind of a little bit sad though, I haven't ran into King Angel or Elephant in quite a while. I wonder if they got banned or they just got fed up with the game mode. <laughs> I know they were both bots, but either one of those possibilities is true. Gonna mainly try to get Malfurion gone. I did attack with that first. We really should have attacked with Lillian first, to be honest, but it is what it is. We do hit into Brukan, which is great. Oh, we're one off of lethal. Okay, they're going to heal up a bit. I I think... Okay, so they healed for... There's a few... We, we probably do want a Whirlpool. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Whirlpool. Whirlwind. I guess we're going to try to leave Malfarian up. Probably isn't the best strategy, but I don't think we'll really have any worries here. Yeah. But they're going to be able to scale their damage really, really quickly if we can leave Rukon up. Oh, we almost got Nemzi gone. We got Boggy, so that actually makes our life a lot easier for this turn. We are slower no matter what, though. So I think we're going to try to Berserker and then use the third ability on... Lillian, because that should allow us to wipe out the majority of their board, I think. Depending on how quick they actually are. Perfect. And then we hit that. <laughs> Surfing lives for another day, or not. I guess he does heal himself up. Alright, how do we want to do this? I think Drek'thar is the next mercenary. Mainly because we can get shamanism on him this next turn. I really did want to do a nature build with Drek'thar, but uh, when MXW said they had a Gruul build, that kind of put everything off for at least a week. I know Master Puppet also had a Rathian build that I kind of really want to try out too. Because I want to try to get at least every mercenary in the final patch. I may or may not get to that. We'll, we'll see. There's Tyrande. Um, We'll try to get Shamanism. We'll be able to win this turn. Maybe not this turn, but next turn. We have a lot of damage on board. Nothing is really low here either. Okay, perfect. That's one gone. And we get Tyrande gone this turn. They actually went after Gruul, okay. And uh, there we go, we win. Alright, oh, let's see what this person has in store for us. I'm curious. I wonder if they're a fan of Bao. I'm assuming maybe not. Maybe that's just a... I, I know Bao is actually like a name that you could have. Alright, so it's going to be Frost, at least in the starting lineup. Local lore... Uh, local lore is a problem. I will say this, local lore is a problem for us. We're going to want to try to get rid of local lore as quickly as possible. I mean, we are a slower team, so that actually helps us out by quite a bit. Just please, Cadgar, don't, don't hit before, of course. Huh. Let's use that. Let's using Fainting Faint. And I think Whirlwind. Because all of this will be quicker. Oh, actually, no. If we use Mobilizing Strike, they don't have some type of root this turn. So we should be fine. Yeah, they'll just buff everything else up. Come on. Cadgar gets it for hit for a bunch. And then we get Local R gone. We did not finish off Cadgar. But we should be able to finish him off next turn with the Whirlwind. We could actually use Dirty Tricks also. Let's use Whirlwind. On Tricks hits both of those. King Salvo, one shot Cilillion. Mobilizing Strike helps us out for a turn. All right, so we have three mercenaries. They have four mercenaries. I'm assuming the last fighter on their team is probably going to be a dragon. So Gruul actually is a pretty good call here. 
Oh, they actually put out the dragon first. Okay. So we dragon shot it. We put up a add and then we can use the orcish onslaught if we want. Then we could also summon up a different add too. But I think three hits should get rid of Nemzi, right? Maybe it's four hits. Maybe we should. Um, yeah, let's just go for four hits to be safe. Or, or <laughs> maybe not. Probably should have went for four hits. Maybe this will hit Nemzi. Come on, hit Nemzi. Ah, not the worst option. Oh, three hits is fine, I guess. All right, we need to get rid of Tronde next, probably. I'm assuming the last mercenary is Cairn. Weird positioning, but yeah. All right, we can do 60 damage to... We also probably should just straight up attack with it. I think this... Should make us quicker. Hopefully. <laughs> what we did didn't just screw us over by a bit. Alright, that gets rid of that. Really should have went after Sinestra. Okay, they'll go up. They'll use Earth Mother's Frenzy. I guess we put down Drek'thar. Problem is, we don't really have that much AoE is the thing. At least AoE left. Most of our mercenaries are like one target only. I I always get annoyed when people AFK once they realize they're probably going to end up losing the game. It, it just annoys me. Like, we'd win probably no matter what next turn, but it, it doesn't, doesn't change that fact. Right, let's try to get rid of the totem, and hopefully we can get rid of Sinestra. Oh, hey. Perfect. But not perfect. That's fine. And then we can just finish them off. I, like I said, I, there there was really no chance we were losing this. But it would have been nice if they didn't AFK. And uh, there we go. Okay, let's see what they have in store for us. Even split. Doesn't really give us too much information. Kane, but with a little bit of a twist. Truth be told, I faced this person before. That's why I put Cruel down first. I know if you have no if you know there is a dragon in their team, you might as well put down Gruel first. But if you don't know, you can't do something like this. There's going to be another game where I kind of snipe them a little bit, too, because I did face them quite a few times. Also, getting rid of Ysera is probably not even the best thing that we could do turn one. Probably would have preferred to go after Cadgar first, to be honest. They did root us, so we should be able to... Oh, I guess we... Eh. Let's go for a mobilizing strike. The nice thing is, this team, outside of Gruul, can actually get buffed up by Sarfang. I didn't realize Sarfang got buffed up to affect all uh, Horde characters. That's actually a really cool buff that I, I didn't actually know about. Can't get rid of Cad... Oh, maybe we can. We have mobilizing strike. There we go. There's the cad gargon. All right. So I don't actually remember what they had on bench. Got to make sure we got the combo on that. I'm hoping this will be able to just hit everything. And then we can summon an additional add. Three tricks. Oh, you're about to get done dirty here, my friend. Wombo there. There goes the Tron Day. Uh, I'm assuming the last one is Bane. Bane is probably the last mercenary. Right. What? Let's try to snipe the totem. That's actually a really interesting little synergy they have there. The totem automatically gets you four plus spell damage. We do really need to get rid of Bane. <laughs> We don't have any dragons, so let's go. Do a bunch of damage to everything. That buffs up the work by quite a bit. Then we should... Oh, well, you can't finish them off. Uh, there goes our entire board. Okay, so we still have three mercenaries. They're incredibly low. We should be able to finish them off, I think. All right, let's use Fainting Faint just to be extra safe. There's the Vents of Rally, Painting Faint, that gets rid of that. We also really, yeah, I, I was going to say the bird is probably the, the biggest problem right now. 
Actually, no. For this team, I guess the bird doesn't really matter. And we should be able to finish them off on this turn. Voila. All right, now that we're through the games, let's discuss my final thoughts of the build. So while this build actually has a lot more synergy than you might originally expect, <laughs> this is probably one of the worst builds that I put in out in quite a long time. Gruul really is just a really bad mercenary, and it is a little bit of a shame that we never got any additional support for him because he would have been a really cool mercenary to play around with. The fact that he scales so quickly with crazed flurry and can do so much damage to any dragon mercenary your opponent puts down in a single turn is actually quite insane for how bad he is and honestly this is probably one of the teams that you're going to want to skip out on unless you really wanted to use gruel much like myself if you enjoyed the video please leave a like comment and subscribe until next time bye bye